Hi there. Welcome to New Life in Christ and Happy Thanksgiving, especially for those of you in the United States who are watching this. Let me ask you, what do you say when someone sneezes? Bless you? Gesundheit? The bless you originally came from Pope, Pope Gregory I during the time of the Great Plague in Europe, and he directed people to say, God bless you, in hopes that prayer would keep people from getting worse and dying. We shortened it from God bless you to bless you. Most of the time, we just say bless you and we leave God out. You know, before Jesus came to earth 2,000 years ago, people had a lot of different names for God, but none of them were personal. Jesus addressed that in Matthew 11:27, where he said, no one knows the Son except for the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except for the Son and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. And in John 18, or John 8, 19, some people asked Jesus, where is your Father? Jesus says, you do not know my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. See, people had ideas about God, but no one knew God until Jesus came. They uh, referred to the divine, and they would call him God, or the most holy, or the provider, or the deliverer. They had a lot of descriptive names. The Jews wouldn't even say the name they had for him out loud. To this day, when Orthodox Jews write about Jesus in English, they write capital G dash D. They have a concept of deity, but they know so little about him that they even leave out his name. Jesus came to show us what God is like. No one knew until Jesus came. Now, what do you think is the main thing that Jesus revealed to us about God? John 17, 26, Jesus said he's praying out loud to the Father, but the disciples are watching, and he says, Father, I have made your name known to them and revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so, so they will know the love you have for me is in them and I in them. He revealed God's name to them, and the name God wants you to know him by is Father, Father. And Jesus showed them what a good, good Father he is. Jesus came to reveal that God is our Father. Now, think of your own dad. Would you address him as capital D dash D? <laughs> Just to illustrate how little the Jews knew about God, in their scripture, in the Hebrew scripture, which we call the Old Testament, the word Father is only used 15 times in the whole Old Testament. And then it's only used as father of the nation, or father of a specific person like Adam. Then Jesus comes on the scene, and over 165 times in the four Gospels alone, Jesus refers to God as Father in a personal way. The uniqueness of Jesus' teaching on this subject is strikingly evident. It had never been done in the entire world before. Jesus called him Abba, which we would say today, Papa or Daddy. There's no evidence in any pre-Christian Jewish literature that Jews address God as Abba. The intimacy that Jesus talked about was incomprehensible to people at first, and it still is, unfortunately, to many people today. Abba was a term that little children used affectionately to call their fathers. Now, this was not just a way that Jesus taught his disciples to address God. It was the way. He said, here's how you pray, our Father. The Greek-speaking Gentile churches in Galatia and Rome continued to address God as Abba after Jesus went back to heaven. They used this foreign title to them for God because Jesus had used it and taught his follow followers to do the same. Now, the rest of the New Testament also emphasized the fatherhood of God. Paul describes God as Father over 40 times in the two-thirds of the New Testament that he wrote. So what's the big deal? How is this important in our lives 2,000 years 
after Jesus was on earth in the flesh. What's the practical application? Especially when we talk about Thanksgiving, when we celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, like a little child with their father, when we have childlike faith and understanding of what God is really like, we have assurance. (laughs) We know we're okay. We know we're loved and accepted and valued and cared for and provided for. We know that our Father, our Papa, will protect us from whatever we need protecting from. Our identity is correct and solid and unshakable. Like little children, you have no worries. And like little children, you want to be with your dad. You want to be like your dad. Jesus showed us, he revealed to us what Father God is like. See, when you know the truth of what he's like, you're captivated by him. You can't get enough of him. You want to be with him all the time because he's safe and he's good and he loves you unconditionally and he accepts you totally just the way you are. You know you're included in his family. There's never any question. Uh, Honestly, answer this yourself. Is that how you feel about God? Do you Do you feel like he's your father? Are you captivated by him? Do you feel like you just can't get enough of him? You want to be with him all the time because he's safe and he's good and he loves you unconditionally and accepts you totally just the way you are and he likes you and you know that you're in his family and there's never any question? Do you have that kind of relationship with God? When you do, like you hear him speak well of you, to you, and to others about you. You never have to wonder if he's going to like you or want to be around you or if he's raised the bar of achievement to please him to some unobtainable height. Sometimes I'm with my two youngest grandsons who are two and five years old before their dad comes home from work or wherever he's been. And they get all excited when they hear his car drive up, when they see him coming in and they smile and they scream and they run to him and say, Daddy, Daddy, can you play with me? Can you play with me? Jesus showed us that God, our Father, is like that. He's totally good. He wants to be with us. He likes us. He thinks about us all the time. He loves being with us. We're the apple of his eye. See, when you know the truth about what God, your Papa, is like, it literally changes everything, changes your whole life, every second of it. Baxter Kruger, Steve McVeigh, Don Keithley, friends of mine, and many others, including myself, believe that one of the most important verses in the Bible is John 14, 20, where Jesus tells the disciples the night before he's going to be crucified, he says, a day will come when you will know that I am in my Father, and you're in me, and we're in you. There's no comparison to knowing about somebody and to actually knowing someone, knowing them intimately, knowing who they are and what they're like and having an intimate relationship with them and talking with them and listening to them and knowing their name and knowing what their friends call them. When our uh, phone rings at home and someone asks for Margaret, it's obvious to us that they don't know Kitsy, my wife. Margaret is her formal name, her given name, but no one ever since she came home from the hospital, ever called her Margaret. She's always gone by Kitsy. Anyone who calls her Margaret obviously doesn't know her. Well, Jesus came to reveal the forgotten father that no one on the face of the earth knew. None of them knew him as their father, their daddy. No one really knew him at all. They knew little bits and pieces and glimpses of him, and a lot of the things they thought they knew or that they did know about him were not true. Jesus came to show us exactly who God is and what God is like. Not so that we could know about him, but so that we could know him. Do you get that? There were various recorded times of Thanksgiving events going back to the first winter when the pilgrims were in America, But it was centuries later until those days were finally consolidated and recognized by President Lincoln, who proclaimed a National Day of Thanksgiving on the last Thursday of November in 1863 to render thanks to our Heavenly Father for these inestimable blessings. 
Thanksgiving was being thankful to God, our Heavenly Father, for our blessings. Well, today, sort of like with Gesundheit, many people shorten that to just saying, I'm thankful for this or that. And they leave out, I'm thankful to God for this or that. Let's say that you're thankful to another person, like your boss for hiring you. And you and your boss are in the break room, and you say, man, I'm really thankful for my job. Well, both you and your boss know that he chose you, he hired you, but you didn't actually thank him. Now, when you say, boss, I'm so thankful to you for choosing me and hiring me for this job, that has a different meaning. What's different about it? <laughs> well, it's personal. You're actually thanking the one who chose you and hired you. There's an acknowledged connection. Paul writes this in Ephesians 3, or Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 11. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having chosen us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having, be, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being chosen according to the purpose of him who works all things together for the good according to his will. He has blessed us with everything there is already. So when we say, I'm thankful for good health or I'm thankful for good weather, who are you thankful to? The Father. I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to set my, I'm going to focus my intentions on saying, I'm thankful to the Father for good health. I'm thankful to Papa for this great weather. I encourage you to take the opportunity to talk to your father, whatever you call him, father, daddy, Papa, you know, whatever, and tell him you're thankful to him for the things that you have in your life, whether it's other people or whether it's things or whatever it is. Now, if if you feel uncomfortable doing that, being that personal with God, well, you're where the Jesus were until Jesus came along, until Jesus introduced them to his Abba, his Papa, and their Papa. He wants you to know him as Papa today and be intimate with him, to have a special endearment for him, and to relate to him in, uh, intimately and not just think of him as God somewhere unapproachable out there, up there. So I encourage you to get into a quiet place, be still, focus your intentions on listening to your papa, and ask him to reveal to you how he feels about you and what he's really like. And ask him, say, so, say do you want me to know you as papa and call you papa? And then listen. And then enjoy and just bask in what you hear. Now, don't just do that once and think you've got it. <laughs> Every day he reveals to us that he's even better than we thought the day before. So you can live in eager anticipation every day of getting to know him better and better and better and finding out how his mercies and his grace are new every morning, all day long. You're in for a great adventure, an adventure that includes thanksgiving, not just being thankful, but being thankful to Papa for all he is and all he's done for you. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. See you next time.